What's up, what's up, y'all? It's your boy, Dan Moore, back with another one. Hey, um, today I want to speak about, um, I want to just talk about some things, you know, dealing with, uh, I want to talk about dating in the United States. And I want to touch on the certain behaviors of certain females. I got only 36 minutes, so I'm going to probably sum it up. I want to talk about the differences back in the day, part two, the differences of, da of dating and getting with sisters back in the 90s compared to 2024. Of course, I'm a lot older now. I'm 25 years older than I was uh, back in 1996, so y'all know how old I am. Yeah. Uh, I look good for my age, that's all I'm gonna say. Um, I wanna speak about your, about, the dating in, in the matrix, especially in the black community, in the African-American community, as they say. I say American-African. Today is different, whereas back in the day, getting into, getting with quality sisters meant something. Nowadays, it really don't mean anything because Ain't nobody standing on anything, right? So, it becomes a, what I can get out the relationship. And to, what some brothers are beginning to take the, 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 the stance of, I just want a friend, and we can have fun, we can hang out, but we can see whoever that we want to see. Whereas back in the 90s, it was more, Boyfriend, girlfriend. I'm not saying that er, that I'm I'm not pushing the monogamy thing, but I kind of am. But it never was monogamous. You know what I'm saying? It's always been been like poly, you know, um, polygamous or polygamy, or you having more than one woman, and that has its place. But I'm just saying today in the dating scene. Where back in the day, a lot of us were simps because a lot of them songs that they made, like by the Whispers, the Four Tops, and all these people, they was always catering to women. Today, you don't hear that. And the millennials have a point, but they're running into issues that's going to jam them up because... I know what was and I know what is. You know, I'm from the Generation X. I'm from that era. Y'all know how old I am. 25 years ago, 26, 27 years ago, I was 25. So it's 2024. Y'all know how old I am. If you do your math. And I don't look bad for my age at all. I'm still kind of cut. I still kind of, I'm a little buff. You know, I got some sides, and, uh, you know, I can uh, shed some pounds down here, but I'm still good. Anyway, back in the day, man, you know, everything was clear cut. It was like, yo, we're going to go back back at the crib. We're going to have some fun. Then we're going to go out and eat. No problem. Today, how much money you got? Where you taking me? You know, um, and on, on something on certain avenues, they ask you for the cash first, and then they'll talk, right? Which is crazy because I spoke to one of my boys, and he said he was talking to this girl one time, right? This chick, and he thought everything had been thorough. He thought the girl was on point. And he was going to quarter and shit. All of them was going to, you know, date and shit like that. But 
when it came down to it, right? When it came down to it, the, the chick asked him for some money. And it threw him off because he was like, what? He didn't realize the girl was all about the money from the get-go. Get so, so she was on that other thing rather than doing the thing that he thought. He thought she was on the straight path. She was on the narrow path, right? Which is meaning she was on some other venture that he didn't expect. So after a while, he kept on running into females like this, and he eventually turned to the other side. So what do I mean turn to the other side? He started to catch on what was going on, so he started to use them for recreational use, which is meaning recreational use. Get what you can do, have your fun, and keep it moving. A lot of females do that, but it backfires on them because they can get pregnant in that situation. The ammunition they have is child support. So you got to be careful if you choose to go to that way. Which is many people's going that way now. Because everything that was in the 90s is not even in, in, in the early 2000s. Ain't what they used to be. Ain't what they, it's not what it used to be. So, you see a lot of millennials, they're, they're doing certain things which the Generation X cats, and I hate to say this, we can benefit from what they do because some of these millennials are leading the charge. What do I mean by that? When you go onto YouTube, it's this guy named Austin Holloman. I want you to check this guy out. This guy's 24 years old. He's traveled the world, okay? He was an ex-barber. He had a craft and barber. He took his money, and he's traveling the world. I'm a generation Xer. I can learn from this young man. So it's never the case that you can't learn from a young a person under you because they're understanding this whole retirement shit. Like you hear people say, like me, I'm a generation Xer. I'm after the baby boomer generation and that generation in between. I'm right. I'm, I'm like at the tail end. So you got the baby boomers, which is my mom's era. And you got the era in between and you got my era. Like I said, my mom graduated high school in 1965. I graduated high school in 1990. 60, 70, 80, 90. That was 30. That was 30, 30 years. 65 to 90. That was like 20 something years, 30 years. That was like 25 years ago. So, these millennials are beginning to understand you don't have to wait 30 years to your retirement. You don't have to wait until 65 or 67. You can do things that, that you can live your life before that time and don't have to wait and, 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 and uh, depend on a new job. You know what I'm saying? So the millennials have a point. I'm not saying all of them. I'm saying the ones that got their head on their shoulders. So now... I'm going to go to this. I'm going to tell you 
the difference between and I, I I never dated overseas. I was married overseas. Twenty something years ago, I was married. And I'm gonna share this with y'all. I'm only sharing what I'm sharing. Some things I ain't gonna tell you. But the stuff that I'm telling you, I don't have no problem telling you. I was married. I was married to a Moroccan. The culture was totally different. What do I, what do you mean, DMR? This is what I mean. Right? The culture of how they treat their men is different. Now, again, American Africans in America, who are called African Americans, they had traditional, they had stuff like this on the plantation where they had family, right? That's why you hear people have 14 brothers and sisters, 15. They was from that lineage, but it died out. So now you see the foreigners, like the Mexicans, the Arabs, the Latinos, they have their cultures intact in the Indians. So you can look to them and see the blueprint of how everything is going. But we had that blueprint before. Right in slavery, then you went to sharecropping, then you went to the Jim Crow. And the last effective uh, movement was Dr. Martin Luther King when he boycotted, boycotted in the, in the uh, early 60s, no, in the late 50s, early 60s, he had a boycott and he pit businesses damn near out of business. Which is a revolutionary act. Family was family back then. Just like I told you, my mom is a baby boomer. I'm a generation X and you got the millennials. So, I'm trying to tell you all the difference. So now, going back to Morocco, the culture of Moroccans, they take care of their men. Yes, I dated outside of my race, yes. Not dated, I got married. And I'm going to share this information with y'all. I have no problem with doing that. Morocco is a beautiful country, but it's different provinces in Morocco. You got Casablanca, Rabat. Marrakesh, Kanitra, Mohammedia, Rabat, Sally. Sal, it's called Sal, but they say Sally. It's right next to Kanitra. It's between Rabat and Kanitra. Kanitra is, a, is in the interior of Morocco. It's on the west side of Morocco. So when you're dealing with Morocco, you're dealing with a lot of provinces. You got the old city of, of Kanitra and you got the new Kanitra. You got affairs, you got the new city affairs and the old city affairs. So the new city affairs and the new city of, of Khanitra replicates the more modern aspect of Morocco. So what you're going to experience when you go to the, the great country of the Maghrib, Morocco, is when you go into a household... You're going to experience the greeting. Some greeting says, Aslam wa alaikum, which is the Islamic greeting. Some greeting says, Labas, right? Which is the, 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 the French colonized Morocco for 50 years. So some of their terminologies influenced the, the Moroccan culture. Like Sabon. Sabon is soap. Douche is shower. In Arabic is gusl. See? So, so the French influence as well in Morocco, but the Moroccans got their independence in, in the 60s. I think the late 50s. So they totally got away from France domination. French domination. So the Moroccan culture is very unique and is very... I like the Moroccan culture. 
So when you go into a Moroccan household, you're going to experience Labas, Assalamu Alaikum. How are you? K for Holly. You know, K for Holly. Right. What you're going to experience is in a Moroccan household is green tea. Every household issues you green tea. Green tea is the norm. Excuse me. Excuse me. So, when you come into a household, into Morocco, the introduction is Labas, Assalamu Alaikum, Kefaholic. You sit down. Every household has green tea. That's the custom of the Moroccan culture. Then you may sit around and when you eat, you don't eat individually. You eat with the family. You eat with the family. They have a big bowl of couscous. Now the couscous in Morocco in the Maghreb is different than the couscous in America. Just like the Italians got the Italian pasta and the pizza in Italy is totally different than in, inside the United States. The only place you want to get good pizza is in New York. That's the only place, New York, New York City. New York, that's the only place you want to get it is New York. New York, Bensonhurst, Bay Ridge, pizza is awesome. I have never been to Bensonhurst. I can't go to Bensonhurst because I'm black, and I would probably get murdered if I go there because it's like a, a lot of Italian mafioso that don't really approve of black people inside their neighborhoods. But what I'm telling you, it's common sense. You, you come to Italy, New York. Morocco, New York. It loses its, its uh, legitimacy, but it's still got that flavor in New York. Then you come down to where I'm at, Delaware, Wilmington, Delaware, and you go to Philadelphia, and these places, they still got a little inkling, but it's not like the home. So again, when you go into a Moroccan household, you're going to experience customs that you haven't experienced. And American Africans, black people, have had this back in the day. Because when they came for slavery, they had a, had a, had a tight-knit group in slavery. You know, black people struggle in this country, man. They, they survive. And those are my people. Yes, I'm my American African. Okay, I have family that was in Powhatan, Virginia, not so far from Jamestown. My father's from North Carolina. So I, I I have a southern I have a southern background, but I stay up north, right? Near Philadelphia, New York, Baltimore, DC. So I'm called what you call a Yankee. Right? So I just wanted to share this because yo, I'm I'm uh, coming up on uh, 20 minutes. Um, I know y'all probably got lost, but I'm saying, love who you want to love, but understand the dating scene and the marriage scene is beginning to change. You have some of the brothers they going outside their race. I don't have no problem with that. If a sister likes somebody outside race, go for it. If a brother like it, go for it. If a Latino like it, go for it. If any other ethnicity, go for it. 
I'm called the un the the United Nations of the dating scene. <laughs> that shit don't mean nothing to me because you can get experiences from other nations, and you can grow from that. So I encourage you. I know some of y'all mad as hell for me to say that. I'm not a pro black. No. I used to be, but I stopped that. I'm a worldly person. And I know I might catch out from some of your Pan Africanists. I ain't gonna say his name. He might score me. Okay, he score me. But I'm saying from because of my experiences, I'm open to all women. I love my women, I love all women. A female is a female man. A woman shows affection, and I show affection to a woman. Man and woman, that's how it's supposed to be. Regardless of what nationality you are, I still have love for them, them women. I respect women. I don't care if you're Indian, I don't care if you're Arab, Puerto Rican, Dominican, Colombiana, Lebanesean, Jordanian, women or women, bro. So, I'm not going to be that long. I, I just hope that y'all understood me a little bit. I shared about foreign cultures. I shared, shared about the dating scene inside the United States of America, which is shot at this point. And people can get get what they can get with is monetarily only. So, you, you got to play it the best way that you can play it, but don't take, don't be taken advantage of. So, again, it's your boy DMR with another one signing off. If you like my video, hit the thumbs up. If you don't, thank you for your view. Peace.